in verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now let's look at this. <clears throat> Lord, if it be thy will, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. And like I said, that's where most people are. Lord, if it be thy will, then you can heal me. Lord, if it be thy will, <clears throat> you can take this cancer out of my body. <clears throat> Nobody that says that is going to get healed. Why? Because if, if it was his will, it was his will before you ask him. If it was his will and he could do it, then he would have already done it based on how you're saying it. Does that make sense? So the fact is you have to know his will, then, and then he tells, Jesus tells us to pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> it's not necessarily a question. Do you get that? Thy will be done on earth as in, it's a command. Isn't that right? I mean, look at how it's written. <clears throat> thy will be done. That's a command. It's not, well, Lord, if thy will be done, Lord, if you want your will done. No, he didn't say that. He said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Right? <clears throat> so, now notice, if his will is going to be done on earth, guess what your body is made out of according to Genesis? The dirt of this earth. Isn't that right? So if his will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven, his will has to be done on your body. Amen? Because why? We go from dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Isn't that right? <clears throat> now, notice, he says here, well, first off, I'm going, to, I'm going to hit these two things. Lord, if thou will. What did Jesus say? I will. Do you realize that forever answered the question, if it's his will? See, here's the problem people make. They look at that and go, well, that was his will for that person. Okay, you just denied the Bible. You just said God's a respecter of persons. So God doesn't have a different will for every person. God doesn't have a different will for every person sitting in this audience today. He has the same will for everybody. Number one, it's his will that all should, that, that none should perish, but all should come to know Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? That all should be saved. So we know that's the will of God. <clears throat> then we also know that his will for us is that we be conformed to the image of Christ. Is that right? Now, if you're going to be conformed to the image of Christ, that means that, that what that doesn't mean. Okay, well, let me, I'll tell you both. <clears throat> First off, that means you're going to look just like him in the spirit. When you got born again, you were recreated in his likeness and his image in the spirit. And in the spirit, you look just like him. Now, that means of the same essence, it does not mean that if you stepped out of your body, that you're going to look like Jesus looked, and we couldn't tell you the part from Jesus and you. You're still going to look like you. You're still going to have the features of you, but of his essence and who he is, you're going to be of that same essence and who he is, but you're going to still have your appearance. Does that make sense? Now, <clears throat> what that means also is that we are to be just like him in our soul. That means why? Because we have the mind of Christ. So we should think his thoughts, speak his words, and when you think his thoughts and speak his words, now you are operating in the mind of Christ, and you'll say what he said, you'll think like he thought, and therefore you will talk like he talked, and you will act like he acted. It's that simple. Now, in the body, see, for some reason, we can go along with all that with the spirit and soul. When you get to the body, we think, oh, the body's different. No, his, your body is important to Jesus. <clears throat> That's why he bore those stripes. See, he went to the cross for your spirit. He went to the whipping post for your body. That's why he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Isn't that right? Blameless, holy. Isn't that right? Now think about that. Your body is supposed to be blameless, just like your soul is supposed to be blameless, just like your spirit is supposed to be blameless. But for some reason, we think that God stops. Part of that is because early on in the, not in the Christian church, but early on when Christianity was uh, becoming more established, there were groups that raised up <clears throat> that separated themselves and said, oh, the, the, the body doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's trash. It's no good. Because they talk about referring to what the Bible says about the flesh. The flesh isn't about the body. The flesh is about your carnal soul. So he would talk about this and they would separate themselves and they would do things to themselves to discipline their body. And that's where a lot of things even came out of the Roman Catholic Church where they would whip themselves. It didn't start with the Roman Catholics. It started with other groups that were non-Christian. 
and they started beating themselves to punish themselves, and then they would say they're entering into the sufferings of Christ. No, he finished his work, and you can't pick it up and try to carry it on. The sufferings of Christ that you will suffer is persecution by doing and living godly in Christ. Amen? So, but your body is important to him. He expects your body to be blameless, and he expects us to be blameless, spirit, soul, and body, to be kept blameless until the coming of the Lord. So our bodies are supposed to be blameless before, meaning having no fault in it, all right, which would preclude sickness or disease being in it. If you're going to be like Jesus, spirit, soul, and body, it does not mean that your body is going to metamorphose somehow to look like a, a 30, roughly 33-year-old man, <clears throat> a Jewish man, walking around Jerusalem, right? That's not what's going to happen. You're going to look like him. You're going to be of his essence in your body, meaning let's look at how Jesus was in his body. Was he sick? No. Then you shouldn't be either. Why? Because as he is, so are we. Even if he had gotten sick, which is impossible because of his faith and because of his trusting God, even if he could have gotten sick, even if he had have gotten sick, the Bible doesn't say that as he was, so are we. It says as he is. Today, can Jesus get sick? Then neither should you. Do you understand that? That should, but before you can walk in that, you have to first believe it, see it, and agree and say, that's truth. And many times there will be a path of getting there, just like in anything else. Now, <clears throat> notice here. Lord, if thou wilt, you can make me clean. He had no doubt about God's power, about Jesus' power working and God's power working through Jesus. He had no doubt about that. He said, if you want to, and that word, if many of you have been through the DHD, you've heard me talk about this word because the word here, will, is a Greek word, ethelo, which literally means it is an intense desire out of your innermost being based on who you are and, your, and the nature and character of who you are. So when he said, if thou wilt, Jesus, if you really want to, if it's really in you to do this, you can make me clean. Now, that's where many Christians are today. And the funny thing is, back in Jesus' day, on, when he was walking in his flesh on this earth, he was, people said, oh yeah, he can heal the sick. That's not a problem. Forgive sins? Oh, he can't do that. Now, now, now we're getting into blasphemy. And now the church is completely upside down. And we believe that, oh, forgive sins? Of course, no problem. Well, I'll go tell anybody that their sins are forgiven and they can come to Jesus and, and Jesus has forgiven and all I've got to do is accept it. I'll tell anybody that. Uh, but tell them that by his stripes they were healed? Well, we're not sure. Well, if you're not sure, then you don't believe the Bible or you hadn't studied it, hadn't read it, hadn't gone through it. So, but he said, <clears throat> if thou wilt, if you strongly desire based on who you are, you can make me clean. And then Jesus forever settled the question of his will concerning anyone's healing for anything. He also forever settled the Father's will concerning anyone's healing because he said, I will. Isn't that right? Right there in verse three, Jesus put forth his hand, touched him saying, I will be thou clean. Be thou clean. He didn't say get clean. He didn't say get healed. He said be healed, right? Now notice, if this, now this man obviously probably wouldn't have known it at the time, but if he had known what we know, and especially if he had gotten born again and could have gotten born again at that time, Jesus' word, be thou clean, we would say means, what does it mean? Be thou healed, same thing, isn't that right? So that, may, that means that that thing could never come back on that man again. Why? Or he would not have been in a state of being clean. Jesus didn't say, become clean, hope you stay that way. No, he said, be clean. So from that time on, that man should have been in a state of clean. Does that make sense to you? It's the same thing with healing of any sickness or disease. Now, <clears throat> so Jesus forever settled the question of his will concerning anyone's healing, and he forever settled the Father's will or the question of the Father's will concerning anyone's healing. Why? Because in John chapter 8, you don't have to turn there, but you can write it down or go there if you want to. I don't care. I'm going to come right back to verse 4 here in a minute. But in John 8, 29, Jesus said, 
for I do always those things that please him, referring to the Father. So if he does always those things that please him, then when he healed the leper, he was doing what pleased the Father. And notice, it is impossible to please God without faith. Is that right? So that means Jesus, even in healing, had to operate in faith. Do you get that? Now, what that means is <clears throat> you can never again say, well, if it be thy will, because he's already settled that. It is always his will. 